Hello everyone, I'm Sugarcane Defender, and I'm here with a quick tutorial on how to install Olama and get it running with Z-Wave, my AI waifu software. So, what you're going to want to do is head to olama.com, I'll have it linked down below, and then go ahead and hit download. And we want Windows, so we'll hit download for Windows and then it'll start downloading at the top right. By the way, I have no idea why my microphone now sounds like I'm in some kind of Zoom meeting, but it does, so. While it's downloading, let me tell you some of the benefits of Olama. First, you have faster loading, so that's the delay before they start generating a response. At first, I thought it was really big. Um, I thought it cached it, but it doesn't actually do that. But it's just a little bit faster than the Uba Booga. Uh, second thing is it has better model support. There's a lot of different models you can download that will actually function. Like new models that come out, you don't have to wait for all these weird little updates. You can just plug and play a lot of the time. And there's also models on the Olama website here that you can also download, but you can still download the models off Hugging Face and use those as well. And third is image models actually work. They're also called multimodal models, but yeah. Uh, a lot of the time when you'd use a multimodal model and send an image with it, it would be super slow on Uba Booga. Like none of that stuff has been updated for I think a few years. I don't think it's been updated since I started working on this project. But with Olama, when you send an image, it goes just as fast as it would with any other model. Keep in mind, not all language models have this capability, but some do. And so I'll also be showing you how to install that today. Just the vision on your language model. I won't be covering how to do it in Uba Booga, only in Olama. It just doesn't make sense explaining it for Uba Booga because it's just, the, frankly, it just doesn't work. Like, enough of my talking. You should now have Olama setup.exe downloaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And then it took a second there. We're gonna wanna hit install. And this is gonna take a little while to go through all of this, so just be patient. All right, so now you should see a little message saying Olama is running. Click here to get started. So it'll be down here. So we'll go ahead and click that. And you might be like, why is it bringing this up? Well, the thing is, it actually just runs all in the command line. So let me actually close out of this. And let's open our configuration for Z-Wave. We see this .env that you may have messed around with before. And this is in the Z-Wave files right here. Go ahead and edit it with Notepad++ or just Notepad. And in here, you see, you should see ZW Olama model. So right here, I've already put in an Olama model for us. We can choose this one, or we can go get different models. Uh, I'll show you how to do that in a little bit and kind of what to look for. But for the time being, we're just gonna copy this one, this Olama model. Go ahead and open up command prompt. And so because Olama is installed, we type Olama, and it should say, uh, give us you know all this different info. And what we wanna do is download the model to our computer. So what we're gonna do is Olama pull, and then I'm gonna paste in the name of the model we have in here. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. And so that's gonna pull it down from the internet and go ahead and install it in your system. And this again will take a few minutes. Just give it a little bit of time. So it says success uh, after a little while. And you'll notice I pulled up my task manager and we can see our GPU here. I ignore the very high video encode right here. That's just cause I'm recording. Uh, but if we go to Olama, and instead of pull, we type run, and then paste in our language model there. And then if we go ahead and hit enter, then it'll start to load it. You should see the dedicated GPU memory, 
That should go up here in a second. Yep, there we go. So it's using 9.5 gigabytes of our VRAM, roughly. There was a little bit before that. Uh, and so now it's loaded in our chat window here. So we can talk and say, hey, what is a GFCI outlet? And yep, there they go, explaining away. Olama works. You can see right here. And now that we've confirmed that, we can isolate it, you can isolate any issues into Z Wave and start hooking that up. So we can actually go ahead and close out of this. It's not like Uba Booga, where you need to keep it loaded. In fact, you don't even have to open up any command window at all is the really nice part, apart from polling the model initially. But the nice thing is that once that's done, you'll never have to, you know, open it up and load it again. It'll just be on your computer and Z-Wave can access it as it needs. So let's head back in to our .env right here, where it says API type as Uba Buka. We'll want to change that to Olama because that's going to use the Olama Python library in order to interact with it. Let's go ahead and start her up using our Windows batch file. And here we are. And so if we send a message, say, hello, Ember, how are you today? I have the voice off right now just because I didn't feel like setting it up. If we send that, and it might take a little bit to spool up the model. And yep, yeah, we're getting replies. Uh, pretty mid, but not bad. That's probably a good accurate statement of my day today. I do have to go into work later tonight. It's like a night raid. Anyway, yeah, we'll hit send and you see, wow, that's fast. Right now at the moment, that's just because we don't have a whole lot loaded in memory. because It's just this chat. But you may have noticed, compared to the Uba Booga, we've skipped two steps. One was setting up the configuration files. The other was setting up the character card. Uh, the configuration files are handled automatically. I just gave it the good base defaults uh, using the API, so you won't need to worry about that. But as far as our character card, that has actually changed. So let me show you how to change that now. So previously, if you had Uba Booga, let me go ahead and start it. Anyway, previously in Uba Booga, under our parameters and under our chat is where we put our character card. So here, what we can actually do is copy this context from any, you know, character. Once it's copied, it's actually just in our configurables, so... Z-Wave main, go into the configurables, and it's the char character card.yaml. I'm going to edit this in Notepad++ personally. And right here, yep, we see, you know, some default character info, but if we want to change it, we can paste whatever we want. So let's clarify her name is Ember, and then we'll ask her some questions, see if she remembers her name. Also, side note, if you had semicolons in your description before, I don't think it likes it. Or no, actual colons. It doesn't like actual colons because it gets it confused with the markup. So just use semicolons instead of normal colons if you can. And so now that I've rebooted her, I'll ask her, Hey, what's your name again? And if I hit send, yep. So she remembers her name. So this is all just in memory from that character card. We're hooked in with Olama, but let me show you how to use different models in Olama. So if we go on the Olama website, there's these models, and we see just all sorts of them listed here. And if we wanted to run DeepSeek R1, we could run it, but if we wanted to, all we would need to copy is, you see how it says Olama run and then this tag? We would just copy this. And make sure we close out of our waifu. Where we have our model, we would take it and paste it in. 
right there, and then that would run it. Uh, but we don't want to do that. I'll also show you there's two ways to do it. So there's on Olama, but we can also choose models off Hugging Face as well. So for example, if I wanted to do this Loyal Macaroni made, which is a decent model, we're going to use this model. And right here, we actually don't see Olama. There's a good reason for that is, oh, I believe Olama will only run .ggUF models unless it's off their website. What we would want to do is look up Loyal, we would go to this Loyal Macaroni Made 7B GGUF and we would hit use this model and now we can see it for Olama. So just make sure you get the GGUF version of whatever model you want to use. Like if you have a model you want and it says dash IMAT, uh, you'll have to type that in manually because it doesn't have that for some reason. But under here we can choose, you know, our quantization level, which is basically just how compressed it is. Five is reasonable. So we'll go ahead and hit copy. Open up the command window again and just paste this in, Olama run, and then you'll have this right here. I'm actually going to copy this for later use. But yeah, when you tell it to run, it automatically pulls it also, by the way. So pull and run, you know, it doesn't matter. You can just copy this and then it'll have it downloaded for Z-Wave. But since I have that copied, I can go in here and paste this in and we should be able to run that. So yeah, that's how you download models off Hugging Face. We'll go ahead and change that back though because we're going to need this for our next example here. Now that we have that set up, we want to set up our models to actually be able to use vision to be able to see different things. So how do you do that? Well, let's head back into our .env as always. We're going to make a few changes there. Right here, the default I have, this is a good normal model, but it can also do some vision. So that's why I have that as the default right now. So that's already valid. And this stuff down here, we don't need to change. Oopa booga configs so we don't actually need to change anything here all we need to do is turn module visual on instead of off and that should allow us oh by the way this previous model we loaded this loyal macaroni made since we aren't going to be using it um we can do slash buy to go out but it'll still be loaded in memory so what we want to do is type olama ps and that'll let us see everything that's loaded. And we can see here, it's still gonna be loaded for four minutes, but if we wanna go ahead and force it to unload, cause by default, Z-Wave sets it to stay in memory for a full day, which if you're testing around different models, obviously you're not gonna to wanna to wait that long. But by typing Olama stop, and then just paste the name of the model in there, then it'll stop it and remove it from memory and we should be able to see here yep and decline means it's removed from memory anyway let's go ahead and start up z-wave now if we load in we should see a new visual tab and there's a few different settings here i'll just explain them so this use image feed turning this on means that when you take an image uh, you can just upload any files from your computer. Uh, this direct talk and send, with that off, it just sends the image to the bot. With this on, you get to talk to them before. That's why it's on by default. Check, uncheck this preview before sending. That lets you preview out of the camera uh, when you press C to take an image. And you can press X to take it again, or press C if you're happy with the result. This is good for a lot of cameras, just because they're not in focus. I don't know, cameras kind of suck. <laughs> Webcams, they're not good at like varying light situations, honestly. Or at, you know, recording audio. Which, now that I think about it, yeah, this definitely was recorded on my webcam microphone. Finally, check uncheck for capture screenshot. That'll just take a picture of the current screen whatever your main screen is, and then send it to the bot. All these settings are pretty good, so 
Let me turn back on keyboard shortcuts. If I press C right now, it says it's viewing the camera. And yep, right here is a image of my wall. And so if I press C, I can confirm it or press X to take another screenshot, but I'll hit C. So Ember, what do you think of the decorations on the wall? If I hit control to stop talking. And so now we can see, yep, there are also two flags hanging from the ceiling. That's not true. There's only one, but yeah. Forest theme. They got the bear clock correct. So they're able to see a lot of these models kind of struggle, but they get the general gist of what's going on. So let me use the image feed this time. So if I hit that, then I'll open this up and then I can pick any file from my computer. Uh, man, there's so many good images for me to pick from. Uh, let me choose this Cheetos mascot. Okay, okay, okay. But what do you think of this picture now, Ember? And it shows a woman wearing a Cheetos costume. Damn, she got it. So true. And so, yeah, she's reading this out. Of course, I have her on mute because I didn't turn on her actual voice module. But yeah, that's how you set up image detection with Olama. We go into this. You see, this model is the same as our normal model. So it'll take up less VRAM. I'm not 100% sure on this model. I don't know if I like it or not. So you can run a separate vision law model from your actual language model. You are able to separate them out like that, just so you're aware. But yeah, that's actually all there is to it. Only downside with this model in particular right here is that I'm having a lot of trouble with the beginnings of sentences always being the same. So that leads to quite a bit of looping. And I'm not exactly sure what to do about that. So that's something to look into fixing. If anyone has any ideas, it'd be good to hear them. But I believe that's it. We have everything on how to use the vision and what not.